Shalom, ladies and jellyfish. Hey, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I freaking love Hey Arnold and have for a long time. This awesome 90s Nicktoon about a boy with a football shaped head and the girl next door was so entertaining and fantastic, but the moments that shine were the darkest and most mature episodes. From themes of alcoholism, depression, heartbreak, to even societal norms and stigmas, when Craig Bartlett wanted to make a tearjerker, he definitely did it well. So today, why don't we count down the top five saddest and most emotional episodes of Hey Arnold? Let's just jump right into it. Starting off strong, this season 4 episode rings true to a lot of important themes unfortunately absent in a lot of our modern programming. This beautiful patriotic war story of Arnold's grandpa Phil and Gerald's dad Martin is a really interesting episode that takes a simple approach to telling a story. It takes place predominantly as a road trip, as Phil tells his hyperbolic story about fighting in World War II, which takes up about a third of the episode, and then we learn about Martin fighting in Vietnam. Starting with Phil, he searches the truth in a lot of scenes, and says he kicked Hitler's butt, which makes Arnold really pissed off because he wants to hear actual stories, but then Phil actually tells the story about how he single-handedly defeated an entire army of Germans using spoiled meat, and how he was involved in some interesting affairs, wink wink, along the way. The words between the lines, if you will, and the dialogue can be pretty funny at times, or just pure silliness. Help! My weenie's on fire! Phil's voice acting and overall dialogue also just adds that next level to it, and makes it super entertaining to listen to. But that's the more comedic side of the episode, until we get to Martin, who tells his story as mostly a file clerk during the Vietnam War. Gerald had hoped his dad would be a war hero who killed lots of people and had a gun, but when Martin just tells his son the honest truth that he barely even held a gun during the war, and was resorted to organizing papers every day, Gerald also gets a bit annoyed and loses inspiration from his father. The way Arnold and Gerald both lose those views in their elders, then come to grow until the end of the episode, is super reflective and great character development. Martin tells the story of how he did save one man who was shot in a trench by wrapping paper files around his wound and saving his life, but his war story never had more action than that. After their road trip arrives in Washington DC, Martin overhears Gerald telling Arnold how he thinks his dad is a loser, and this makes Martin walk away in a very heartbreaking moment. It's so raw, and I imagine many vets can relate to this idea of not really contributing much, even though they were all heroes in serving their nation. This shot in particular of Martin walking with his head facing down is such a beautiful representation of this mood. The next day, Phil shows Arnold a real statue of his likeness at the Capitol, which really surprises Arnold who thought his grandpa had stretched the truth like he always does. But the scene that really brings us home is the scene with Gerald and Martin, as Martin tells his son that he honestly wasn't a big shot war hero who saw tons of action. He was just a regular guy who served his country and made a small contribution to his corner of the world. And I think that's super inspiring to be honest. Then as they talk, a man approaches him and recognizes Martin, thanking him for saving his life. Yup, this was the same guy whose wound was covered up by Martin's file folders, and thus his life was saved by Gerald's dad. He shows him his wife and kids, it's just such a surreal moment, as in, Martin was basically solely responsible for those two kids even being alive on this earth. It's crazy to think about. The way this episode wraps up with Arnold and especially Gerald, learning their lessons and growing as characters, and this heartwarming and just awe-inspiring ending of Martin meeting the man whose life he saved by just being the file clerk, is so raw and so heartfelt, and maybe one of the best stories ever told about veterans I've ever seen, certainly out of a kids show. <laughs> This episode is pretty cliche to be here, it's been talked about by every Tom, Dick, and Harry you find in discussing the show on YouTube, but all you need to know is that it's absolutely flawless. The story follows Arnold as he takes a wounded pigeon to the only person who can cure it, Pigeon Man. Despite the community telling him not to do that, and spreading rumors about who Pigeon Man is, and why he acts the way he does. Pigeon Man himself is a dude who dresses up in a weird costume, and has a rooftop full of pigeon cages where he takes care of these birds. As he and Arnold become friends, they begin to open up to each other, despite Pigeon Man resenting humans, and preferring birds because of society's treatment and stigmatization of his rather peculiar situation. They begin to interact until Harold and his friends come and trash Pigeon Man's rooftop and basically destroy his entire livelihood. This breaks Pigeon Man's heart, which trickles down to Arnold, as Pigeon Man explains that this is why humans don't understand him, and his entire life has been more safe and accepting among these birds than the people who don't understand his view and don't share that love for these birds. This was pretty deep for a kid's show, man. And as he explains this to Arnold, his birds fly Pigeon Man away as he flies towards the sun. Now, Never to be heard from again. A lot of fans like to theorize that this is where he takes his own life by jumping off the roof, and the sun metaphor is Arnold's interpretation of the scene, or rather, how he'd prefer to remember Pigeon Man's departure. It just goes to show that deep messages like this can come from any show in any package, and this episode will go down in history as an incredibly meaningful and underrated gem. But it's still number four. What could be even sadder? Darling, you left my heart in pieces on the floor.
Aw, oh, man, this may be a slightly personal pick for this list, being not the most famous Hey Arnold episode out there by any means. But to be perfectly honest, this episode encapsulates everything the show's about. It's filled with so much raw truth and bittersweet twists that it honestly makes you feel bad for the predicament these characters find themselves in. But at the same time, it balances a fun and simple plot and all the hassle. All these things coincide beautifully into what I can only describe as a masterpiece. Let's just get into it. The episode follows the recurring character of Venus Bimoni, basically the show's mix of Elvis and Frank Sinatra, who in this episode fakes his own death in obituary to become relevant again. The way they wrote him as sort of a washed-up Italian jazz singer whose expiration date has passed him is a really telling tale of many of these cases in Hollywood and elsewhere. I mean, he kind of reminds me of Rick Dalton from that Tarantino movie, but to say he's untalented is far from true, as is proven at the end of the episode. But anyway, the episode starts off rather sad, with the boarding house watching the news report of Spumoni's suicide and all reacting in very sad ways. Arnold in particular is very sad at this news and asked to attend Dino's funeral out of respect. So they do, as we see Dino's sad and bygone life pass him by. We see his ex-wife, who only shows up for his inheritance money and doesn't give a single crap about him. Kind of funny if you ask me. Also, when she bickers with her kid, that's just the icing on the cake for me. We see his old friends coming up and denouncing him as a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad person. And we see a career of punching photographers, being involved in other scandals, and dwindling popularity among his fans. It's all really true and speaks to how many famous artists take their own lives or abuse themselves after passing their peak or falling into obscurity. After all the funeral stuff is over, Dino gives a bunch of his belongings to Arnold. We don't really know why until we see that Dino is still alive and tells Arnold that he's going to be living secretly with him and cashing all the checks on his old records since most celebrities hit relevance again after their deaths. Arnold is obviously stunned to see Dino alive again and in typical Arnold fashion is rather uncomfortable going along with Dino's ruse of keeping him hidden forever. And we go through the jokey part of the episode as he tries to not attract suspicion from the boarding house members but just randomly starts singing in the shower like an idiot and plays piano until everyone discovers. But no one in the boarding house believes it's him and they just attribute it to him being a ghost. This part of the episode is kind of weird I'll admit but it was pretty funny to see Potts and Oscar argue over the ghost and stuff like that. Dino realizes with Arnold that he can never perform again, release any records again, or even show his face in public again. On top of this, his popularity has reached a peak and now he has impersonators of him making boatloads of money off his name and music. These impersonators even live in his house and start dating his ex-wives. And that's when it hits him that he wants his old life back. The way all these things interconnect in the context of the episode is super interesting and you really feel like you're on Dino's level throughout all of this. That's when we get a montage of Dino finally getting out of his lazy shell and putting on some clothes and sneaking into a concert on one of his impersonators and just beating the crap out of the guy and singing his heart out. It's honestly a great climax because he finally got what he wanted, character development came full circle, and everyone gets their comeuppances. At first, no one takes him seriously or gives him respect for coming back like this. When Arnold starts clapping, that makes his old resentful friend see the truth and start applauding their old buddy, and that's when the whole world accepts Dino Spumoni back as the living legend he is. His character development from being resentful and bitter to being somewhat actually grateful and reminiscent of his own life, bumpy as it may be, is incredibly inspiring. And Arnold's involvement in the episode just feels really perfect for what they were going for. He doesn't seem too nosy or intrusive and barely has any lines. They just leave it to Dino and Arnold just carries the plot along and gives Dino the encouragement to build his character development home and give us that amazing climax. And that's why Dino checks out gets the number three spot on this list. <laughs> If you've ever seen this episode, then I knew from the start that it would be near the top of this list. Helga on the Couch is an episode that is not like any other in this show. It focuses primarily on Helga as she goes to the therapy with the school psychiatrist. The episode starts off with the psychiatrist talking to the principal, saying that she'll just be having a look around the school and making sure everything's good, as it relates to mental health and all that. She basically observes as Helga does essentially what Helga does. Punch Brainy, bully other kids, and give all of her attention to Arnold in class. This tips the therapist off a little bit, so Helga is assigned a therapy session with her to talk about her behavior. Side note, Principal Warts is just hilarious in this episode. The way he just speaks and just acts is all so weird. Anyway, Helga's parents make sure to tell her to not show any emotion and to strictly sweep any hidden family secrets under the rug. This is where the thing about Miriam being an alcoholic comes in. It's just hilarious how they added a reference to that in a kid's show. This all adds up with Helga finally going to the shrink appointment and tries to hide things from Dr. Bliss. I gotta say, the dialogue here is absolutely hilarious, and even though it was written by the legend himself, Craig Bartlett, it really sounds like an authentic nine year old girl's thought process while talking to an adult she doesn't really like that much. Helga goes into flashbacks about her childhood, talking about how her parents never noticed her at all and were too distracted with her perfect sister Olga, while she was, ironically, swept under the rug and borderline abused during her early years. Until a little football-headed boy named Arnold showed her a tiny act of kindness which made her love him for the rest of her life. It's all absolutely heartbreaking and beautiful, and the way it's told through the rainy nature fallacy metaphors just adds an extra level of oomph to it. Not to mention the music,
music, which is stupendous. Kudos to Jim Lang, whose beats I occasionally drop in videos here and there. Anyway, Bliss gets more and more repressed thoughts out of Helga, until she eventually gets to Arnold, which makes Helga really uncomfortable. It's also really funny to see her try and stumble after saying Arnold, like she says, R, aren't you getting tired of this? And things like that. Eventually, Bliss keeps pushing and pushing until Helga breaks out and admits to loving Arnold very much and begins telling her about him. I just love how the lines are written, and this performance delivered by the voice actress is absolutely awesome. Talking to Dr. Bliss makes her feel a lot better about herself, and she walks home, bumping into Arnold and giving her usual mean remarks. But deep down, knowing that she's a changed person. Overall, Helga on the couch did a few things. It managed to develop Helga in the span of 22 minutes, from a stubborn and hard shell jerk, to an open and welcoming person who finally confesses her love for Arnold. It also shows us how terrible her childhood was, and how she was ignored and abused by her parents from a young age. It also happens to be the origin story of how Helga fell in love with Arnold for the first time. Honestly, what more could you ask for in an episode? Arnold's Christmas may be not only the saddest episode of Hey Arnold, but also the best episode, period. It perfectly encapsulates the spirit of Christmas while telling such a beautiful story at the same time. It follows the story of Helga trying to find Arnold a nice Christmas gift, and Arnold trying to find a perfect gift for Secret Santa when he's assigned Mr. Wynn. Unfortunately, Mr. Wynn's gift requires a bit more effort than Arnold was expecting, as he was separated from his daughter Mai during the fall of Saigon during the Vietnam War. Kinda reminds you of something. Anyway, the tale follows Arnold and Gerald trying to get him him the best Christmas gift ever by finding his daughter Mai through a government agency employee named Mr. Bailey, who at first dismisses their requests and grumpily tells them to buzz off until they offer to do his Christmas shopping for him and save him the time if he manages to help them find Mr. Wynn's daughter. The problem here comes when the last thing on their shopping list are Nancy's Timoni snow boots, which are completely sold out in the entire city, and that Helga also happens to really want for herself. Side note, that montage of the employees obnoxiously laughing in their faces is the funniest thing I've ever seen, it's literally incredible. After not finding the snow boots, Bailey is still a douche to them and doesn't help him find the girl, and Arnold goes to Christmas celebration feeling totally defeated and unhelpful, until Helga has significant character development and gives up her own snow boots which her parents managed to get her so that Bailey can stay up overnight and find Mr. Wynn, his daughter, once again. And I have to say, this ending scene of Mr. Wynn seeing his daughter again for the first time, and Helga standing outside in her socks like a guardian angel, just gives me such massive goosebumps. It's such a bittersweet ending because she never really gets the legitimate credit for her sacrifice, but that's really the lesson to take away from it. The writers of this episode were so on top of this impeccable writing that it easily brought this episode to the top of the list. Mr. Bailey's character development and his scene with Helga is absolutely amazing. He literally goes from an angry jerk who dismisses Arnold almost immediately, to a caring guy who does a favor for a 9 year old just because it's the right thing to do. Arnold grows after going to the trouble of finding the agency, do the shopping, and try to convince Bailey in the episode, and after failing to achieve his goal, he's totally heartbroken. But in the end, and his efforts pay off as Helga makes the ultimate sacrifice. We get a whole new look into Mr. Wynn's backstory and exposition, not only with the beautiful ending reunion, but also the beginning scenes, where he explains where he comes from and how he had to give up his own loving daughter to the soldiers so she could have a better life. His voice acting performance and facial animations are absolutely flawless as well and just exude emotion. And of course, Helga experiences some of the most character development she ever gets in the series, and she literally goes from black to white, contrasting heavily from wanting to get, get, get from Christmas to sacrifice sacrificing the coolest boots just so Arnold could get his dream, and Mr. Wynn could finally celebrate Christmas with his daughter. That's all pretty deep stuff, and the way it all piles together in the episode is honestly a masterclass on how to write an episode like this. With all that said, that's my list for the top 5 saddest Hey Arnold episodes. Do you agree with my list? Are there other episodes you would've put here? If not, what do you think about the episodes I did put? I wish you could still dislike the video if you didn't like it, but YouTube removed it like a bunch of morons, so I guess just like it and make my day, and totally subscribe if you enjoyed. My Twitter and Discord server or also in the description if you want to ever catch up with the socials. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and football-headed jellyfish next time. Shalom! Hey.